the the way I've been thinking about it lately is that like at the highest level, uh, and I'm just speaking to jujitsu because I don't know. But it's, yeah. I mean, everything that you're saying is similar. Yeah, right? yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, but at the highest level, it's not just about being good. It's about being. It's about having all those techniques and then being dialed in, in the sense that you're able to pull the trigger when the opportunity arises, right? Like, so I've watched my two trials matches, especially the one that I lost, like, like probably 15 times now. And like, I've thought about like, okay, I should have done this there. I should have done this, this there. And I have pretty specific ideas about things that I failed to do. And it, I, I know what it is that I, what I should have done at specific moments and at, for the next trials, hopefully those moments arise and I can do them properly. Now I've been, we've known each other now for like years, mm -hmm. but I think that I've seen just in like maybe the last year or something, I feel like you've approached like losses a lot different. Like they used to like cripple you. Yeah. But now I feel like you, well, I did this well or did that well. How, how much should people mm -hmm. emphasize like the wins and losses? I think like, in MMA, the win is everything because you only fight three times a year. Yeah, and Where you're paid, and you're pay, getting paid, you know, a lots pay, of money. Your pay gets cut in half if you lose. So like, you know so wins I mean? and losses have to be the the only focus. Yeah. Where in jujitsu, when you're competing, you know, you could compete probably fifty times in a year. I'm sure, mm -hmm. right? You have for sure. Yeah, or I mean, more. Yeah, and so how how do you approach that now? So so Jake Shields years ago, after like one of the worst losses I ever had. This is maybe like four years ago or so uh, at Henzo's, he told me, he goes, nobody cares. In jiu-jitsu, nobody cares about the losses. And he started listing off random jiu-jitsu losses he had that I had never even heard of, right? And he goes, does anybody remember these? No. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> like, I still, I was why? like. Just because of how many matches. Yeah. So the, th the thing is for me is like, I like, I like care so much about jiu-jitsu and like, I, I think it's really hard when you care a lot about jujitsu not to take your losses personally. And like, I think that it's a skill that you can acquire, which I think I've gotten a lot better at, which is not taking your losses personally, which is recognizing that ultimately, okay, like you must have done something wrong. Like, what did you do wrong? Right? Like, and you have, there's two ways you can look at that. You can look at that and take it personally and go, Oh, I suck. I'm just not good. Blah, 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 whatever. Or you can say, okay, I think it's very natural for the immediate aftermath of, of a match to sting if you lose, right? If it doesn't, you probably don't care, right? right. Then what's the point? That's yeah. why I always think like, be like, well, just go out there, you know, just get a good experience or like, I'm not, I wouldn't want to go. I can't, I, mm. but maybe that's why I never won at the highest level. No, I cared too much. No, no, like, I, I don't think that's it. <laughs> no, yeah. I think you're right in that. Like, cause okay, this, I always view this as cowardly when you, Act like, bro, I don't even care, man. I'm just going to go out there and see what happens. Like, yes, you uh, do. That's a build an excuse before you go yeah. out, I think. Of course you can. You know, we, we notice some people do this a lot. Like, before they have a match, like super fight or whatever, mm. they'll really hype up their opponent. Right. I'm facing a super tough uh, world champion, brown belt, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And they hype up their opponent. It's going to be my hardest competition yet. And that's just for like an insurance policy. Like yeah. if right. I lose, it's because of this. Like mm. there's no reason to do that. Like I don't, yeah. people don't do that in other sports. Yeah. It's just to protect your, well, it, it, I mean like I, I, I like respecting my opponents. I don't ever want to like talk down on them, but like at the same time, you're also right that there's this sense in which what you're doing is trying to be like, Oh, I only lost cause they're so good. Right. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm good too guys. It was just, close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cause yeah. then yeah, you're, you're hedging your match. Right. For sure. Right. Yeah. And like, so what I was going to say is that th there's this balance between like, not, you don't want to like look at your matches and not care at all about the result. Because then what happens is you kind of fall into this pattern of stagnation. And, and you, I've seen this like, like many times where guys who compete all the time and they're just like, yeah, man, it's just for the experience. It's like, yeah, but like, that's just sort of like, you're not getting better. You're just competing, but you're stagnating. And like on the other side of the coin, you have people who they care so much. Like, this is what I think I did. I, and I took it really personally as a reflection of who I was as a person. Like, oh, I lost because I'm a fucking failure. I'm a fucking loser. You know, and like, I've got to, and like, I've always been like a super hard worker where like, I would be depressed for like two days, but like, I would still like, I mean, you saw me at Henzo's, I think yeah. after losses where <laughs> I looked miserable and I was still there. Yeah. And like, I would always show up and still train. But the thing is, is like, it's, it's totally unnecessary. I think to like, 
be like after trials, as soon I dude it, I was not happy that I lost, but my first immediate response was, okay, I've got to watch the match, go home and figure out what happened. And I showed up to training the next day. Like I trained the day after trials, like, uh, you know, because like, what else am I going to do? Like, this is how I'm going to get better. I'm going to look at what happened. And like, I think the thing is, is like, um, ultimately, like, I know I didn't lose because I'm even I'm a fucking loser. Even if the guy like, let's say the horrible worst case scenario guy goes out there, passes my guard, takes my back and chokes me out. Like, okay, that is pretty fucking bad. But like that didn't happen because you're a big fucking loser. That happened because you did things wrong. You got to figure out what went wrong and you might not be able to fix it. Maybe you just don't have the tools on a physical level. Maybe you don't have the time. Maybe you're too old. If you're a 37 year old guy and you get fucked up, all right, you can get better, but like, I don't think you're going to get to the ADCC level. It's a 37 year old purple belt, right? Like it's going to be fucking, it's going to be fucking hard. Um, but you, you have to be realistic sometimes. And I yeah. think people struggle to do that. Then I think that's when they go in the, Oh, I'm just going to do it for fun. Or, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'm 29. I'm going to be 30 in about like five months or so. And you know, I think I have a realistic shot of still doing very well competitively. And like my goals are ADCC and IBJJF. And I know that so long as I stay focused and I proactively work on the things that I need to work on, both on like a technical level, but also on a physical level, like I'm lifting weights a lot more now. Is that a big part? I was going to ask, like, if do you focus on nutrition or anything at all? So nutrition, uh, maybe not so much. Um, I'm still a vegetarian. No, no, I, I was vegetarian for a while, but I gave up on that. Um, 